On this episode of Big Boys Don't Cry, we discuss the film Werewolves Within. You don't have to have seen the film to enjoy the podcast, but if you do listen without having seen it, just be aware there may be spoilers. Enjoy. I was just going to make a werewolf howl, so I'm very impressed with your song. Okay, let, let me hear the werewolf howl. A woo! That's good. I, I like I like a high pitch from myself, like a a woo! Oh, that's good. That's good. There's a, um, a children's book that I read with my son called The Way Home for Wolf, which is lovely. And it talks about a pack of wolves and one gets lost and we find lots of animals help him find his family and whatever. And it talks about him having the, the smallest a which is quite a cute image. That's very cute, yeah. It's oh. not often that werewolves get to be cute, is it? No, generally werewolves are quite gross. Very, very sort of, um, you know, bloody and bitey and goopy, depending on, like, the movie that you watch as well. Werewolf goop. Werewolf goop, yeah. Love me some werewolf goop in my tea. <laughs> I think the worst werewolf I've ever seen is in Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh, you re- can you remember awful. the wolf in that? Terrible. Genuinely does not look like any kind of wolf ever. It's like a sort of <laughs> big, very, very thin... It's like they just got a man, gave him grey skin and sort of stretched him out and gave him some teeth. And, yeah, and sort of a lumbering, wolf. yeah. Not even hairy. My problem with most werewolves is that they're actually not hairy enough. I like a hairy werewolf. And that was where Twilight was good. It's true because they were literal wolves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They weren't even really werewolves, were they? They were just wolves. Maybe what I'm saying is they actually like wolves, and I don't like werewolves. <laughs> you like wolves, you don't like wares. No. What about where's what about, my wolf? <laughs> what about werehogs? Are you a fan of werehogs? Um, are they like feral hogs? <laughs> no, Sonic the Hedgehog becomes a werehog. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, in um, what's it called? One of his games, one of the terrible 3D games. I'm going to get cancelled by Sonic. Sonic Adventure, Sonic Unleashed. Sonic I Unleashed. I haven't played that one. Um, where he becomes the Werehog, which isn't that he becomes like a. You'd have thought that a Werehog would turn him into a pig, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's why. That's why I said that they like feral hogs. <laughs> yeah, but no, he becomes like a a, a wolf hedgehog. I guess where hedge doesn't sound right either, does it? <laughs> really, they just shouldn't well, have done it because it doesn't work either way. Well, he'd still be a werewolf. That's the thing. It's just a, it's just a blue hedgehog turning into a wolf instead of a human. I guess it does beg the question: Can a, if a werewolf bites another animal, does that animal then become a, a were whatever it is that turns into a wolf on the full, full moon? So, like, if a werewolf bites a pig, does the pig become a sort of pig wolf? Yeah. It would still be a werewolf, wouldn't it? Yeah. But just a pig who's a werewolf. Yeah. This is fertile ground. I'm surprised no <laughs> one's explored this concept on film before. I'm sure they have, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do like... Um, I do like uh, the... I, I do like a good werewolf movie. Um, there, there's all sorts of good ones. An American Werewolf in London is very good. I've never seen that. Ah, it's it's nice and funny and goofy and spooky and gross at the same time. I actually don't think I've seen a lot of werewolf films. Um, an underrated, well, perhaps not underrated anymore, but underrated when it came out was Dog Soldiers. Did you ever see Dog Soldiers? No, that's not the one with Channing Tatum. Oh no, that's Dog. <laughs> that's just Dog. <laughs> it's just called Dog. <laughs> um, that looks ridiculous and I want to see that, by the way. Basically, a bunch of squaddies go off to do a training exercise in um in scotland and um werewolves attack them basically and it's a sort of action horror comedy thing um directed by neil marshall who's done all sorts of good um horror movies over the year he did the descent which is that horrible oh, one about yeah, a yeah. bunch of people that go potholing and bad things happen <laughs> Um, I watched that with you and Rob Sherman. Yeah, and I was it, terrified. It by is it. a that is a movie. 
<laughs> and a half. Definitely not one that we can watch for this podcast. But no. um that's you, one that I think, if I remember rightly, did the jump scares well, which yes, I think is a very yeah. hard thing to do. Yeah, very few movies do jump scares effectively. But um, yeah, Neil Marshall, particularly with that film, is very good at them. Um, yeah, a couple of really, really good jump scares there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a good film, Dog Soldiers. Worth a watch. It's fun. Yeah. Um, of course. Is it as good as Sonic Unleashed? Uh, uh, nothing's as good as Sonic Unleashed, is it? The greatest video game. No, I've, I've never played it. But the new Sonic, Sonic Frontiers, looks good. I, I say yes. that as someone who, who, as you know, hates, detests open world games. So I'm probably <laughs> never going to play it. That and it costs £50. But, and I've got like a whole other kind of Metroidvanias to play that are in the £10 price point. But like, yeah, it looks, it actually looks really good. Because it's coming to the Nintendo, isn't it? It is. It's it's already on there for pre-order. Ah, exciting. I don't know if I'll get it because Sonic games frustrate me. Um, yeah. I used to like them when I was a kid, but the modern ones are very... I'm, I'm not a fan. Um, apart from... Um, one of them's apparently really good and feels like an old Sonic game. Um, Sonic Mania, which is basically just... Yeah. But that's got all the old ones like built into it, hasn't it? And then there's new stuff as well. Yeah, so I think it reimagines some of the old stages and then does new stages as well. Um, and it's got like new new mixes of all the songs, which are really yes, good. Yes, yeah. Um, so yeah, that one is apparently amazing. And I would play that because I used to love the old 2D Sonic games, but not too sure on the 3D stuff. But I'll see. Maybe Sonic Frontiers might be a... And before we talk more about werewolves, we can also yeah talk about more video game adjacent stuff and see, have you watched the trailer for the new Mario movie? <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I have some thoughts. Doesn't actually really give a lot away, does it? No, and the reason is because clearly Chris Pratt is so fucking awful that they couldn't really give much away apart from him falling out of a pipe. Him saying one line he says, and sounding English while he says it. <laughs> well, no, I think he sounds like Chris Pratt personally, um, uh, which is why you Christopher don't. Christopher Milkshake Duck Pratt. <laughs> Milkshake Duck Pratt. Um, yeah, I, I have some thoughts. I think Jack Black seems really good as Bowser, which is probably why he's so heavily featured in the trailer, because he's yep. very effectively on there. There's some good humour in there. The humour does feel very Minions-y, mm-hmm. um, which makes sense because it's the same studio, but I think that can kind yeah. of work when you're if you're focusing on stuff like um, Bowser and the Coopers and stuff like that, I think you can get away with that kind of humour because it's a similar sort of silly minions Absolutely. henchman henchman thing um toad seems fun keegan marshall key really seems good for the role um and chris pratt seems terrible which is what everyone said when he was cast because he has no history yeah. of voice work has no range as an actor and is him as himself so i'm i'm yeah. very excited for the first person to entirely dub over all of the lines of chris pratt in the movie with danny devito clips <laughs> which is who should have that been cast in the been. first place yeah because the thing is me, that I'm Mario. that's what been... you need to do like how hard is it <laughs> well yeah charles not Mars... that that was even my my proper yeah <laughs> well, the... not that that was even my proper brooklyn accent but like, I mean, yeah the, why didn't the they thing just get charles martin Char- to do it Char- like... charles martin is you know he's he's voiced mario for however many years now um, with that voice, but also remember that he's an amazing voice actor who does stuff other than Mario as well. What? So if they asked him to make it less high-pitched Italian stereotype and and do something a bit different to make it less grating over the course of a 90-minute movie, he could have done it because he's a professional. Yeah. But instead they got in a big name like Chris Pratt who has no experience of doing proper voice work. He's never even played a Mario game. He's... He, Come on, he's never played a video game before in his life, let's be honest. <laughs> no. I am a big fan of the Marios. Yeah. I remember when I was growing up, I had a Nintendo Entertainment System, <laughs> and boy howdy, did I enjoy it. I loved all the classics. Pong, Spatial <laughs> Invaders. Pac-Man. Pac-Man, Mortal Kombat, <laughs> you know, all of the classic and, games. And- <laughs> And, and I don't necessarily mean think that you have to have a, a passion for Mario to play the role. No. But all I'm going to say is that I feel like Michael Fassbender has definitely played an Assassin's Creed game or did so for research <laughs> yeah, purposes. Exactly. I'd have loved to see Michael Fassbender's Mario. He would, he would be awesome. 
he'd nail it. Also, who's do, who's doing Luigi? Uh, Charlie Day. Okay. Oh, that's right. Danny yeah. DeVito, which which again, Charlie Day when he does a voice, it's just Charlie Day. But Charlie J Charlie Day's voice is really suitable for Mario in the first for Luigi in the first place. I I feel like I would actually would have wanted Charlie Day as Mario and John Leguizamo to come back as Luigi, but. <laughs> <laughs> he's too busy re- I mean, that raking be... in all the millions of dollars from playing Bruno and Encanto. <laughs> he's riding high <laughs> off that still. I mean, I, 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 I'm not sure if Charlie Day would be right because he's got that kind of cowardly Luigi thing going on with his voice. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so I think he would have been a good fit. But I think they really what they should have done is do the entire cast of Always Sunny as the entire movie. <laughs> yeah, so that would you could work. have had, you could have had. Um, uh, what's his name? I've forgotten his name now. Guy who plays Dennis. Uh, Glenn Howerton. Glenn, Glenn Howerton could have been Mario. Charlie Day as Luigi. Could have had Rob McElhenney as Toad. Caitlin Olsen as Princess Peach. And yeah. Danny DeVito as Bowser. I could, I could see You've that. Got great casting right there. Just hire the Always Sunny guys. Get it's them always to sunny write in the Mushroom well Kingdom. To, to make an R-rated Mario movie that you and I would love to see and about five other people would love to see. I know, well, the, the 1994 Mario movie also exists. But, like, 94? It's 93? True. 93, isn't it, I think? 93. Um, I, I've seen some terrible takes by the way there was one that went up where people were saying oh well obviously you know we shouldn't be blaming chris pratt for this because mario is not a character and it's like fuck off is mario not a character <laughs> he's got have he's we got not v- seen super mario brothers 1993 <laughs> well the thing is that mario as a as a as a video game character has very clear character traits and those character traits shine through in all of the expanded games it is in like the um the RPG games and the sports games and everything like that. Mario's got a Mario's got a a, a clear character. But then you've also got the movie There's cartoons. You've got yeah. the cartoons, you've got the live action bits of the same cartoon show. You've got the comics. There's all sorts of other things where Mario has a character. So 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 to suggest that Chris Pratt being bad isn't his fault because Mario is not a character is like, who the hell's going around defending Chris Pratt now? I know. What what is there to defend? He's he's a he's the wet milkman. Yeah. He's he's got two he's got two modes. He's got he's got sassy goofy irreverent man, and then he's got creepy space stalker. And those are the only two different modes that I've seen him in. Do you remember the creepy space stalker movie we watched? Oh yes, with Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, that was yeah. that was a good film. It was a, it was a good film. I don't think it was it did quite what it intended to do. I'll always have a <laughs> because... soft spot for him because of Parks and Recreation, which he is a big part of a lot of the very funny scenes in that show. And also speaking of his voice work, he has actually, as I know you haven't watched Onward, which I talk about all the time, but he his voice on that is very good. Is it his voice or does yeah. he do an actual voice work? No, it's his voice. <laughs> <laughs> okay. In that case, I would not count it as it's his voice his goofy voice. His voice. I'm Chris Pratt. Oh, well, that just happened. <laughs> I can't be serious about anything. Um, <laughs> what about Parks and Guardians of the Galaxy? I like Guardians of the Galaxy, but again, that's because his mode of acting suits the character well. Right. Okay. Where he's got that kind of irreverence going on. Um, Parks and Recreation ended almost ten years ago now, so I'm not going to. That's, that that's true he's done, yeah he's done an awful lot since then and some of it's been revolving around a very very nasty homophobic church yes so, fuck you <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, and and hire someone else it's not too late if if they completely redid they completely redid all of the animation for sonic in the sonic movie off the back of fan feedback they did yeah. it takes an awful lot less time to just get someone else to do the voice work yeah it's Mario. dubbing i could do it in a day Send it. Send me the files. Whoever's behind the film, Nintendo Studios, N- Nintendo Movie Studios. That's a company that exists. Send me the video file. <laughs> I'll dub it over for you tomorrow in a day. I've got the software. I've got my mic set up. I can do it. It's a me, a Mario. No, I think you should do it with your voice. <laughs> it's a me, a Mario. Oh well, I do it as me. That's even easier. I won't it's even me. ask for payment. Mario. It. It's a me, a Mario. <laughs> 
I'd, I'd, I'd 100% <laughs> listen to that. In fact, I think maybe we should both do our own versions of the Super Mario movie. Yeah, yeah. When it finally comes out. If with you're, our own if you're, actually, I, I don't mind being Luigi. If you want to do that, we can, we can do it. Yeah, all right, let's do it. I'll be, I'll, I'll redub with my own voice as Mario. Mamma mia! <laughs> I'm gonna fuck you up, Bowser. Which I'm sure is gonna be a line. <laughs> That's definitely. They've got to get one. They've got to get one it's swear in the script. In at yeah. any at any point. Um, yeah. What about though? I do have a wild card option for Mario's voice that I think we should think about here. Um, Matt Berry as Mario. <laughs> yes, absolutely. It's a me, a Mario, Entrare. <laughs> I say, Bowser, you're a right piece of shit. (laughs) (laughs) I I would 100% watch. Yes, I can hear you, Bowser. (laughs) I still haven't watched the most recent series of Toast of London. That's a very good show. Pass me that fire flower or get the fuck out of here. (laughs) (laughs) I'm a one-track plumber. See, this this writes itself. (laughs) It works so well. <laughs> Petition for Matt Berry to be the voice of Mario. Change.org petition incoming. <laughs> yeah. Can we... No, we should make it one that... Is Change.org the one that goes to Parliament or is Change.org the... Joke? I think that is the one that goes to Parliament if it gets over 100,000 okay. signatures. I think it has to I be... Think we need yeah. to- Debated we in the chamber. Liz, we need to get Liz Truss and Keir Starmer's opinions yeah. on whether Matt Berry should be the voice of Mario. Somewhere in between the, the several daily briefings that they do in the house of, here's a new way we're going to fucking ruin the economy for all of you, you stupid <laughs> hogs. Um, yeah, somewhere in there we'll throw in a... Uh, next up in, in Parliament, uh, a debate about the... Uh, someone who's going to play Mario in a Mario movie. That's how they all talk. Um, My honourable um, friend I'm, is going to play Mario in a Mario <laughs> movie. Yeah. I'm sorry to inter- to to continue to to you know deviate from the topic of this week's episode, but did you see the House of Lords thing with the robot this week? No. What did what um, is this? <laughs> so. They got a robot to give evidence in the oh, House Oh, no, of that's Lords. right. A chatbot. Yes. Yeah. I saw that was happening, a- but I didn't read about it. Ada. Ada, the android, um, <laughs> was was brought into the Communications and Digital Committee of the House of Lords um, to ask about uh, AI robots in the arts. Right. Um, and then the robot fell asleep <laughs> in the middle of the <laughs> thing. Um how how incredible is that? I mean, I think we should do more stuff like that with 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 politics. Yeah, what, when's when's Hatsune Miko's appearance in the, <laughs> in the House of Commons? I <laughs> want Airbud to be on the sports committee. <laughs> Airbud's dead. Don't rub it he's in. He's never dead. He's, he's in our hearts. <laughs> the current Airbud. There's always got to be. It's it's like the Pope, isn't it? Always two there are, the Master and the Apprentice. The, the yeah. white smoke comes out of the Bonio factory, and they announce the new <laughs> Airbud. Yeah, he comes bounding out of the factory. <laughs> yeah. And then that that's whenever they change the sport as well, isn't it? The official yeah, sport yeah, that's Airbud. right. I don't know what each it one even comes, is right now. Each one comes bounding out of the factory wearing a new outfit. It's, cur- it's currently professional wrestling. Right, right yeah, that makes sense. It? Yeah. Um... <laughs> anyway, anyway, speaking speaking of dogs, yeah. uh dogs wrestling people. Yeah. That, um Werewolves Within is is this week's movie. Um did you enjoy Werewolves? Within? Yeah, I I did. You know, I I wouldn't say that it's it's changed my life, but it's it's a decent enough film, isn't it? Yeah, I think the best thing to say about Werewolves Within is for a parlor game turned into a video game turned into a movie, it is far, far better than it has any right to be. <laughs> yes, exactly. It could have gone um, very, very badly with that kind of origin. And you can sort of tell that, can't you? But also, if, if you were to just pop it on not knowing any of that context, you wouldn't necessarily think something's like really up with this in terms of it obviously comes from a bad place. Yeah, I, I, don't, I genuinely don't think you would. I think it stands alone really well. Um, and I think part of that is that it's a fun movie with a fun cast, and it kind of has this whodunit s- sort of structure 
that that works really well and is implemented really well over the course of the movie. So I think you're right. You know, this is a, it's a fun movie. It's not going to change your life, but actually, it's a very funny little comedy, little little horror comedy. Yeah, and it's it's on Netflix and it's only ninety minutes, so it's definitely a good one to just sort of pop on for Halloween. You know, yeah, this month you're looking for a bit of bit of werewolf fun. Although, well, skipping to the end, I was actually quite disappointed with the werewolf content itself, and the werewolf itself was nowhere near hairy enough for me. It looked a bit snouty, a bit like the Grinch. Not not really down with that. Yeah, it did. um, Spoiler alert for the end. I know you put a spoiler warning at the beginning anyway, but spoiler alert for the end of Werewolves Within. It's the it's the pretty lady who's the werewolf, who's the love interest, the manic posty dream Um, girl, (laughs) the manic posty dream girl. Yeah, Um, who who is the werewolf? So obviously they decided, oh, we can't make this woman um, into an ugly werewolf. We've got to have a still vaguely human, vaguely sexy werewolf. Yeah, I don't even know if it's vaguely sexy. I think it's a very <laughs> ugly werewolf. It is a very ugly werewolf, but they didn't want it to be mega hairy, did they? Um, no. But I'd not seen anything um, with Milana Weintraub in before. No, I didn't recognise her. And she is very funny in this. I think as this... Like you said, it's almost like the Manic Pixie Dream Girl trope of a character. But I think done in a slightly subversive way that kind of makes it work well yeah absolutely it's it's a film that i think is very self-aware and if anything perhaps yeah. too self-aware and that it sort of uses uses horror tropes and at times it's pastiching them and at times you're not sure if it's just kind of straight up using them and i think that's what makes it ultimately fall flat in some places but it's still good overall yeah i'd agree where it it has a very clear understanding of the genre of horror and sometimes it leans into it in a pastiche way a little bit too much where it's like okay yes i know you're subverting this but you know um you can't just subvert it and say haha look at what we're doing you've got to actually do something fun with it and a lot of the time it does things that are fun with it but other times it does it like you said it does fall a little bit flat um i think i think what really this it's a relatively simplistic movie um in the, yeah, and that's not know. to say it has to be some kind of big. No, no, big old... it doesn't. It, it it doesn't have to be this this grand thing. And I think actually the movie is better for keeping it simple, um, where people are in a snowy town, they get isolated and they get bumped off one by one by a werewolf. Um, so so it is. It's it's a who done it trying to work out um, who the murderer is. There's a few twists and turns along the way, but um, ultimately it it that's the kind of template. But I think what really sells the movie is the really great performances um, of the yeah. cast. So you've got some some very, very funny people in this movie. Uh, shout out to um, Harvey Guillen, who is um, most well known as Guillermo in the What We Do in the Shadows TV series. Oh, right. Yeah, I've not um, seen that. Every time I see the clips, I think it looks funny. <laughs> It's incredibly funny. It's really good. Um, and he's he's funny in this as... Um, Wakim uh, as, with an M. As, as Wakim with an M. Um, but then also, like I said, uh, you've got you've got Milana Weintraub as um, Cecily Moore as the sort of female love interest character. The post I realised I did recognise her from the TV show This Is Us, which we'd seen. Oh, of. was she in that? Which yes, she was. I still was need good. to watch. And um, she also she played also... Subway Rat Woman in Ghostbusters 2016. <laughs> and apparently, I know that you're a fan of Squirrel Girl. Or at least yes. you have talked about Squirrel Girl before. She is the voice of Squirrel Girl in a podcast series about oh, Squirrel yeah. Girl. That's cool. Um, which came out this year or is coming out this year. I don't know which, but it says 2022. Yeah, um, as you know, I'm not super in, into like superhero comics, but I, a couple of those that I picked up um, are quite fun and enjoyable. Yes, yeah, I've heard really good things about it. Um, so, um, yeah, so that's cool. And I, I hope, like, like I said, not been, not been fully aware of things she's been in, but I think she's very funny in this, and I quite like to see more of that, um, more of her going forward in other stuff because I think she's one of the real standouts here of this film, particularly given that a lot of the characters in this film are very sort of, I don't want to say one dimensional, but you know what I mean. They've got that very clear character archetype again, like in most whodunits. You've got this is the 
this person, this is this person, and maybe they'll throw a curveball to go, oh, but they've got something dark going on. But even then, they're relatively paper thin. And this has got a similar kind of thing going on, but actually her character has a little bit more engagement, I think. Yeah, um, absolutely. And the the, sort of the romantic plot, such as it is between her and Ranger Finn, who's our kind of main character, is, you know, the reason that we're, we're talking about it. But it, it works well, I think, and does lend the film a bit of... Uh, an air of jeopardy slightly separate from the oh well who's going to be the next person eaten by the werewolf um that is kind of there but it sets it up in a good way where they kind of have this relatively brief flirtation at the beginning that ends in them almost kissing and then it doesn't happen and then that kind of hangs over the rest of the film until it's revealed that she is the werewolf and that as a kind of arc worked to tie it all together yeah i I think that's completely right there is this um there is there is a central story arc and again one of the reasons why i thought it fitted in for for horror month here is there is that frisson of romance isn't there between them yeah and so yeah it, it it's it's there and speaking of that romance of course our lead is sam richardson who yeah is one of our favorite people from <laughs> i think you should leave yeah most well known i'd say for i think you should leave um where he is extremely extremely funny in the scenes in that i think three of my favorite sketches from i think you should leave all include him so obviously baby of the year from the very first episode of i think you should leave with tim robinson which if you've not watched i think you should leave it's all on netflix all really short and outrageously funny it's a very very good sketch show really unique as well there's nothing else that's quite like it um it's got this real sort of existential absurdity to it (laughs) which i really love (laughs) um but yeah he he is the host of the baby of the year competition in what i think is still probably my favorite i think you should leave sketch yeah i think so more better than sloppy steaks yeah, I think it still is better than Sloppy Steaks for me. Slop him up, boys. <laughs> Slop him up, boys. He then is the host of the Little Buff Boys competition in another episode. <laughs> I've not seen that one yet. Um, and then he's also, he, he he's the ghost of Christmas Way Future. He <laughs> goes to visit <laughs> Scrooge in in another episode. And he's really funny. Well, can we do a, a Christmas Carol related tangent about that bizarre one <laughs> that I sent you where it, yes. it's like Will Ferrell. It looks, it's the tone of Holmes and Watson, but a Christmas Carol with Will Ferrell and Ryan Reynolds, which is awful on paper, but somehow <laughs> looks really good in the trailer. And I don't want to like it, but somehow it looks good. I'm probably going to give it a watch and see see how it goes. We'll have to watch that in December. And there's a new silly one with Lindsay Lohan. Our December's shaping up great. I'm still holding out for a Christmas Prince 4, which I know is not going to happen. But <laughs> I know, but who knows? Maybe at some point. He's also going to be the voice of Shaggy um, in the new Scooby-Doo series. called It's called Velma. It's a series about Velma. Oh, I didn't know about that. Not Shaggy, the, the terrible reggae rapper. <laughs> How dare you? Iconic performance um yeah mindy kaling is going to be velma oh cool um, yeah. and uh glenn howerton is going to be fred so all right there's some there's some good casting there we'll see we'll see how, Sounds it, good. how it plays out but actually i've not seen much more that he's been in outside of those things and i keep meaning to pick up um other things that he's been in particularly um he's in a show with tim robinson called detroiters oh which I keen meaning to watch, but I don't know how easy it is to actually find in the UK. I think it was on Comedy Central. All right. Um, but I don't remember ever seeing it being on anything. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's going to be interesting. He was he was also in Veep, but I mm-hmm. never got that far with Veep. No, me neither. It wasn't bad, but it was just kind of maybe a bit overdone. Yeah, I think I think it lost because obviously it's an Armando Iannucci political comedy show but it didn't have that same sharp edge of the thick of it yeah so i kind of was like well i could be watching the thick of it again which is funnier than this yeah and apparently <laughs> he's also in ted lasso but i've only seen the first season um so i think he must be yeah in the second season. i've 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 still i've still not watched ted lasso which i should do as a as a sports fan as a foot sports fan it's good it's very very funny and i say that as someone who hates football it, i actually found it a really enjoyable and fun show and it well the first season that i've seen is was really good and it's 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 hyped i think but it is worthy of it 
Okay. And it doesn't okay. do what you expect it to do either. Like it, it kind of gets the obvious jokes about the setup out of the way very early on so it can do other stuff with the characters, which is what all the best sitcoms do. Ah, very good. Very good. Yeah, I do need to watch it at some point. Um, and then he is in something else from this year, which we won't mention yet because it's going to come up Oh, by the end of the month. Um, but he's extremely funny in this as this real vanilla ice cream good boy never swears park ranger isn't yeah. he he's he's this he's he's this really straight cut um park ranger character who gets embroiled in this situation when he's moved to this new town to to be their park ranger um and it's yeah it's it's he's incredibly funny in this and really good as the lead um, so much so that yeah, I hope we get more of him as a as a lead in in movies going forwards. Yeah, absolutely. He's, he's great, and he's you you engage with him as a character, but you also kind of not dislike him, but you do at the moments you are thinking you are such a good boy, and not in a good way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's a he's a soy boy beta cut. Yeah, isn't he? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. So so at times you are just thinking like, oh, just get on with it. Come on um get get a move on be be more assertive in this situation be more wolf <laughs> yeah be more wolf and i think it um it does sort of play into that with his character quite well against the rest of the the kooky cast of of characters um where you do have all of these very odd people in this situation where he's still trying to understand exactly um where his position is with all these people and where those dynamics are with these extremely strong-willed individuals. Yeah. And there's a whole thing about why he's there because he like did some stuff in his previous post and then got posted there so he didn't lose his job after doing something with a license or whatever. And it's just like, yeah, that, that stuff is fine. Gives us gives you enough of him to understand there's some kind of backstory that might be relevant, but whatever. Where's the werewolf? Give us the werewolf. Yeah, give us some more, some more people getting their hands bitten off. Yeah. And stuff like that. <laughs> Um, and yeah, this this movie's not um, it's not grotesquely violent, but it's also not for kids. I'd say no. There are a couple of violent scenes, but most of the violence itself happens off camera, and then you see maybe a bit of the blood or whatever. So it's yes. it's fine. It doesn't throw that in your face. No, no, exactly. It sort of hits that middle ground, doesn't it? But yeah, this is although it is a comedy, and although it's based on a VR video game, this is not a movie for kids necessarily. To no, watch it. but the the score is very kind of classic horror, isn't it? I felt like there was a lot it more is, they could yeah. have done with it. It's not bad necessarily, but it's all like that kind of horror strings, and it's like maybe actually could have done with a few more pop songs thrown in there. Like there's a whole thing with um, oh, what's the What's the pop song that they the play? The Ace of Bass song. That, that's the one. Um, I saw the sign. Yeah. Which is, yeah, kind of almost a bit of a trope as well, isn't it? Using using a pop song to signify something like romance or whatever incongruously and in a nostalgic way. Um, but the, yeah, that I could have done with maybe more, more of that side of things. Yeah, I think that could have been good. And what's interesting is when you look at... Um, when you look at the the game werewolves within, that's set in a medieval style fantasy town. All right, have you played it? And it's interesting. No, it's a VR game. I do not have the hardware to play VR games. You I don't have a VR headset. Zuckerberg headset. <laughs> I don't have a Zuckerberg. I'm not there in the metaverse with my legs now that they finally have <laughs> legs. If anyone doesn't know, there's an incredible thing that like all the kind of metaverse nerds who are all really weird. Sorry. The metaverse is weird and, <laughs> and bad, but like the, the big thing this week was that like leg, it's got legs. Like now you can see people's legs in the metaverse. It's like you didn't have that before. Were they just walking around like torsos? <laughs> I know. It's like w- what's going on? Um, it's yeah, it's really strange. I mean, I've not been paying that much attention to it because it is horrendously boring. Um, well, you, took... you described it best in your text to me earlier. You said the, the metaverse is Club Penguin for NFT weirdos, and I think that is <laughs> that is true. That's what it is. That's all it is, guys. Like, let's be honest. All of it just looks like Second Life. I'm sorry. That's that's exactly yeah, what it's... it looks like, and it will never not look like that. Some someone read uh, Neuromancer or Snow Crash and didn't realize that there was dystopian elements to cyberpunk, and thought that's what I want to do. 
and hasn't realized that actually doing things normally on the internet is an awful lot quicker than having a little house in the internet and then literally walking somewhere to go and have a meeting with people yeah on, in vr that's exactly it i read um there's a newsletter i subscribe to called garbage day i don't know if you get that one it's it's very it's about internet no. culture it's very very good and the guy <laughs> was writing about it in there and he said yeah that like the the metaverse has all this uh, kind of unlimited potential and the the kind of the extent of what Mark Zuckerberg can imagine is a conference call where you can see everyone's legs, which was kind of <laughs> vaguely creepy, but exactly true and absolutely nailed it. So yeah, oh, it's, dear. it's club penguin, but you can, it, but they're having a business meeting and you can see the penguins legs and penguins don't even have legs. That's the worst part. <laughs> no, they got little, they got little waddly got flippers. Little, little waddly flippers. Yeah. They have feet <laughs> as we all know from the movie, happy feet. Yeah. Yeah. But you didn't think um, Happy Feet was going to get a mention in a show about werewolves within. <laughs> I did not, no. Um, but you never know. So anyway, yeah, the metaverse is stupid. It's just pointless. And it's going to lose but, so much so much money for awful people. I'm fully yep. fully enjoying that eventual conference. Well, I'm on board with that. Yeah. <laughs> but werewolves within, so it's a VR game. Yeah, yeah. Which is based on a tabletop game. Yeah, so I which, think... And it's all medieval fantasy. So why didn't they make a... I would actually have preferred a medieval fantasy version of this, but that's just because that's my jam, I guess. I, I think that would have been really cool. The answer is that making a medieval fantasy movie rather than a modern day movie would be a lot more expensive. Yeah, that's true. Whereas here they have to If you want actual them. werewolves, you've got to pay them. A... They're quite like heavily unionised, aren't they? Yeah. Because this, this, this movie costs 6.5 million. That's not a lot in today's is, money. Yeah, not a lot. Most of which went on the the park ranger outfit and the postal workers outfit. And I think what they did was because this it was done before 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 Halloween. It was done before COVID. Before Halloween, I hope it was so. done before right. COVID, but then released during COVID. Um, and essentially, they launched it with a limited theater release alongside video on demand. And this it did really well in terms of that video on demand thing with people watching. Oh, it good. There. Um, which is good to see because well, you always worry that. about those smaller movies that get released during during COVID that kind of get lost in the shuffle. But yeah, um, like No Time to Die. <laughs> exactly that that unknown independent movie. Have that you... little film that struggled to make its money back because of COVID. <laughs> did you uh, Did you watch No Time to Die at all in the end? No, I haven't seen it. It's fucking three hours long. I haven't got time for that. <laughs> but it's sad. Bond. It's on Amazon Prime now. But yeah. Problem with Bond is I, I don't get me wrong. I like the Daniel Craig Bond movies, but they're not Pierce Brosnan in Goldeneye, <laughs> which is which is still the best James Bond movie. It doesn't have Pierce Brosnan poking around a corner with a gun and going. <laughs> <laughs> the Goldeneye is still the best Bond movie in my opinion. It does that good mix absolutely of, of silly action, funny quips, and then high stakes drama. Um, whereas the Daniel Craig ones are objectively better movies, but I don't think they're as good a Bond movie as Goldeneye. They're just dour, aren't they? There's no goof factor. <laughs> There, there, there's moments of goof factor in them, but it feels really out of place because the rest of it's so serious. So Skyfall, yeah. which is an amazing film, Skyfall is genuinely brilliant, and it's actually a with a stupid name. It's a really great deconstruction of um, of Bond and of spy movies and those kind of. Is that a bit like this thing that they have now, deconstructed coffee? What the hell is you, do you know what I mean? Where like you, they give you you've never seen this like hipster thing. They give you a tray and it's got like well, I've I've seen I've seen deconstructed yeah. food before where it's yeah, um, it's the same the same principle. Like the sandwich is laid out in front of you with all its bits in a way you'd never want to see. <laughs> it's it's it, it's a bit is it a bit like that? No, it's like, it's, yeah, this has been it, deconstructed, it, but I actually just want to watch a film. It's more it's more deconstruction in the same way that Watchmen's a deconstruction of comic book movies, where it understands right, the workings okay. of the genre and does something with it. Who James so, is the Bond man? <laughs> exactly. So actually, the villain in Skyfall is almost like a mirror image of James Bond. And what would have happened if James Bond had had one mission where he'd been pushed too far by the state? Or where right, he'd be manipulated in the wrong way, that kind of thing. So actually, yeah, Skyfall is a genuinely really good film. And I think 
there's a reason why all of the movies after Skyfall have struggled is because it actually did an awful lot. It pushed the serious bond about as far as it could. So they were always going to have to take a step back after that. Um, and then they just became more and more convoluted to try and make up for the fact that Skyfall was so good. Kind of cursed the rest of the Daniel Craig movies. Um, but even that yeah. has a goofy scene where James Bond, um, he like jumps off the heads of a couple of Komodo dragons to jump up a wall like Mario with a Cooper. Um, <laughs> That's amazing. And it's like, okay, this is fun, but this does not fit <laughs> this incredibly serious film. Um, it's, no, it's Chris very Pratt was strange. doing it on the other hand. Um, yeah, uh, what would he say? He'd go. He'd say something about them being, they turn them into a great pair of shoes. Hey, it's Bond. James Bond. <laughs> That's how he talks, right? <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's a me, <laughs> Mario. That's my Chris Pratt. <laughs> oh, oh man, I fell through a pipe. That just happened. The last time I was that close to a pipe was when I was smoking some pot. Am I right? <laughs> Which is soon said to be a class A drug in this country. Yes. <laughs> Because we're completely. Yeah, I don't think that's actually going to happen. But, I, I don't yeah. know how much is going to happen <laughs> that they've said they're going yeah. to do. Um, yeah. So anyway, sorry for getting back on the Chris Pratt is a bad Mario train, but genuinely <laughs> awful choice. Yeah, it had to happen. <laughs> genuinely. We're going to talk about that film comes out when it comes out because it's definitely going to have Mario giving Princess Peach a big old romantic smoosh. Yeah, exactly. How about Sam Richardson as Mario? I think he yes, could do a great Mario. Absolutely. Petition, He'd be the Mario of the year. Petition Illumination Studios or Illumination Entertainment. I can't remember what their full name you, is. Nintendo Studios. <laughs> Nintendo Studios to come and get Sam Richardson into the role of Mario. Famicom Studios. <laughs> Famicom Studios. Um, how many awkward in jokes do you think there's going to be in the Mario movie? Probably none because they want everyone to be able to watch it, even if you know nothing about Mario, which is going to be a bad move. Oh, what, so you reckon there's going to be less? Because they notice there's a Yoshi egg in the poster, for instance. Is there? Which I don't know if they'll introduce now, but... Right. I don't know, actually. It could go either way. I hope they. I hope there's a Bob Hoskins reference. Yeah, there better be. I hope John Leguizamo is involved somehow, because <laughs> he should be involved in everything. <laughs> Sabotaging the first screening. <laughs> yeah. Just runs in. Hang, hanging hanging from the rafters wearing a Phantom of the Opera mask. Yeah. <laughs> this cannot be. That's what we want. That's what we want, John. Yeah, we'll try and look scary, but everyone will be like, oh no, it's just Bruno from Encanto. It's fine. <laughs> He's not scary. Oh, dear. You haven't seen it yet, have you? No, no, I haven't watched it. I haven't watched it. It's, he's, he's very, very good. It's just his voice, but the character is very him. And he brings so much to it, even though it's an animated film. Ah, oh, very good. Yeah, I do need to watch it at some point. Problem is that I'm so disney out by their constant overpowering control of the entire media complex that we, we have now. That when something new Disney comes out, I'm just like, oh, another Disney thing. Okay, fine. The Disney plus industrial complex. <laughs> exactly. Big Disney. Big Disney. Well, genuinely, yeah, they own everything, yeah, don't they? Yeah, they do own basically everything. Um, and so I do just get burned out when I see something new. The, the only thing I've been excited about new from Disney was when the new Predator movie came out, which is very good. Oh, is it? Um, yes, it's yeah, it's decent. Yeah. I would recommend giving it a watch. Um, nice. But yeah, in general, I'm just like, oh, another Disney thing. Like, like the new there's a new Star Wars series come out that I should be very excited about. Um, but it's, yeah, I've still not caught up on any of the other ones. <laughs> so, like, oh, they only released the Obi Wan one last week. I can't <laughs> yeah, keep up with this. Exactly. Shit. It's so, so it all come out so quickly. It's just here's all the content, and it is just content, isn't it? This isn't. Yeah. This isn't. You know, you, you look at their sort of content plan reveals, and it's just like, yeah, here's more stuff to shovel into your eyes. Just keep churning it out. <laughs> you hogs. You love I it. correctly identified the difference between a spade and a shovel today at a work volunteering thing where we were doing community gardening, and I was very proud of myself. All right, what's the difference between a spade and a shovel? Shovel's big. Shovel's a big spade. 
pretty pretty much. Now, the spade has the kind of scoopy shape, and the shovel is more the flat, flat one. and bigger. Right, okay. Yeah, it's more for kind of lifting stuff than for digging. So actually, Shovel Knight, his shovel is actually looks more like a spade to me. A spade Knight. Spade Knight. That sounds wrong, doesn't it? It really does. Um, <laughs> what's the difference between a bison and a buffalo? Um, I don't know. You can't wash your hands in a buffalo. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> One of that, my that's favorite bad. awful jokes there. Truly terrible. Um, <laughs> anyway, back to Werewolves Within. Yeah, Werewolves Within. So yeah, it, it does the kind of whodunit thing quite well, I think, where you genuinely, but it because it's lighthearted, you don't actually really care who the werewolf is, but it is still quite funny, and it still holds enough jeopardy to jeopardy to drag you along with it, doesn't it? But it's sort of, it, the pacing is a bit weird, doesn't it? It's sort of yeah. the first two thirds, it's sort of them all kind of getting, like building the tension between them all, and then in the space of sort of 10, 15 minutes, they're pretty much all dead. Yeah, I think there is an issue with the pacing here, like you said, where they should have had more, a steady trickle of people being eaten by a werewolf, I think would have served it better than the way it does happen, where there's one person dies, then two people die quickly, then everybody dies quickly. Yeah. And it it does feel like there's a very disjointed pacing here. Um, One thing I did like about it was that the best sort of mysteries are the ones where you can't guess who the murderer is. And then at the end when it's revealed and they put all the pieces together, you go, Oh yeah, that makes sense. And I think this did that. Yeah. Where when they, when they do talk through at the end, the who the werewolf is and why you do kind of think to yourself, Oh yeah, that does make sense actually. Yeah. I wasn't shocked, but I wasn't like, Oh yeah, I definitely knew she was the werewolf. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so, yeah, it's um, it, it 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 goes well. It goes well. I think that that whole mystery thing. Yeah, I think the difficulty is that we just watched the crow, and the crow is so good <laughs> that like whatever has to follow the crow is going to be difficult. It's true. It's true. It's um, yeah. Obviously, this this movie can't compete with the crow as a no. amazing, um, true truly amazing film. Whereas this is an enjoyable film, light hearted. A nice, a nice fun movie to watch during Halloween, whilst um, whilst more serious, horrible things come up. Yeah, definitely, because it's. I think it, it's easy in Halloween if you enjoy horror to end up just watching a bunch of very violent or very gory or very scary stuff, and it's actually you do need to throw in some light-hearted stuff in there, which I think we've always been good at doing on this show. Yeah, yeah, we try not to have it all being super serious, horrible stuff. No, um, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. That was good. Actually, oh, you're yes, quite good at finding yeah. weird ones as well, like Cat People. That one. Was oh, Cat People. Weird. <laughs> Great movie. Yeah. Um, and the one with David Bowie's The Vampire. That was a good uh, one. The, the Hunger. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that was really good actually. Yeah, that was a good film. Um. So yeah, no, I like to I like to mix things up. I think it's important to have that variety, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a whole thing in this with axe throwing, isn't there? With the the axe doesn't actually end up killing the werewolf, does it? No, it? no. I can't remember. No. You thought that was going to happen. I did I did axe throwing when I was in New York in June on a work outing, would you believe? Oh, very nice. It was quite fun. I wasn't bad at it actually. But in the films, it always looks like you have to throw it hard, and actually the guy told me off for doing it too hard, and he was right. It's better to get it get a good sort of rhythm to it, is it? Let the let the weight of the axe do its own work. Yeah, yeah it, you let the axe do the work. Actually, you almost just lob it. Ah, okay, okay. Ah, well then, that's good to know. Yeah, it's quite good fun. To, if I ever have to throw an axe. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, yes. So yeah. Um. Have you got anything else you want to say? About, um, um, just that it, it's very funny that the, there's a guy who's trying to build a gas pipeline because of course there always is a guy who's trying to build a gas pipeline if you're in anywhere rural um, but there's um, the kind of gas pipe start thing that's there looks like a cock and balls that was quite funny <laughs> yep that is that is a thing that happens in this movie but the real werewolf was capitalism that's true the real werewolf is always capitalism um, <laughs> the real the real monster is always capitalism yeah. Um, 
<laughs> oh dear. I don't really have any trivia about this movie, by the way. It's we've kind of covered it. You, co- you kind of covered it. Yeah, we talked about the background of it being a game already. I wonder what yeah. the tabletop game is like. Could be fun. Yeah, because I don't. I don't think it's like a proper tabletop game, but instead just oh, it's like, like a card game, parlor game. Yeah, like like a almost like a sort of um, murder in the dark kind of situation. That kind yeah, of thing, yeah. rather than it being like an official thing that you do. Um, and yeah, that then sort of turned into the VR game um, afterwards to sort of give it more structure. Um, but yes, uh, so how are we going to rate uh, werewolves within then? Let's see. Well, how many people are hiding out in your cabin waiting to find out if one of them's a werewolf? Uh, so I've got a solid 14 people in my uh, in my cabin. Yeah. I'll go maybe one lower, give it like a 13. I think goes, yeah, after watching The Crow, it was it was almost too far in the other direction, maybe. <laughs> and something about it was like, yeah, the pacing was a bit off and the script was, was generally okay, but wasn't, you know, it wasn't like incredible. It, you know, some of it just kind of was a bit forgettable. But overall, it's pretty decent, quite fun and enjoyable, lighthearted werewolf slash murder mystery film that's fun for this time of the year. So why not? Yeah. If you've got go, your Netflix uh, on. Go give it a nice watch. Nice. A nice, fun little film. Yeah. We all need a bit more fun right now, don't we? Exactly. Exactly. So um, what's uh, what's coming up next? So we've got something that is definitely not a fun little romp. Um, we're going to be watching Car Miller. Right, and this, the, this is a vampire film. Yes, based on one of the very early vampire stories. Which I think predates Dracula. It does, yes. That's right, yeah. Um, so yeah, it'd be Book uh, by Sheridan Le Fanu. 1872 that's right also yeah. an irish no, irish author yeah they love that i read a thing today about how when um, when bram stoker was writing dracula him and his wife and young son like he used to pack them off to aberdeenshire and that was kind of his stand in for transylvania and the, the the like people who he knew there in the hotel where they were staying he used to go to these ruins and just like walk around and do like writing his notes in there and the people around who saw him and described him used to describe him as being like a giant bat amazing i wish people great. would describe me as a giant bat yeah me too so yeah this this <laughs> is a, a gothic novella from 1872 that predates Dra- predates dracula yeah we're going all the way back yeah the film wasn't made in 1872 obviously because film didn't exist so when was the <laughs> film made uh three years ago i think all oh, right so this is quite recent i thought i don't know why in my head this was an old film no, no, it's a it's a very modern, very modern one. Excellent cool. stuff. I'm, I'm cool. excited. We always have to have one vampire one, don't we? Yeah, you've got to have a vampire. Oh yeah, you're right. 2019. Excellent so it stuff. is. It, it looks good. I'm I'm excited. Cool stuff. And it's even described as a romantic horror film, so that's how you know it's gonna it's gonna tick the romance box for us. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed hearing us talk about Werewolves Within and talk, us talking about Mario as well for most of the episode. <laughs> <laughs> and we hope you're enjoying Spooktober. There's so much great spooky stuff out there and we're highlighting some of the best stuff for you. Yeah. And um, if there's any spooky movies you've been watching, which you've been enjoying, then let us know as well. Yeah, let us know. You can catch us on Twitter at Big Boys Don't Pod. You can... Email us, bigboysdon'tcrypodcast at gmail.com. There is a link in our show notes where you can give us a tip. It's just like a kind of virtual tip jar. Give us your money. And we'll be back next week to talk about Carmilla. Alrighty. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.